Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to hey people. Welcome to SketchUp Liveness. This is this is exciting. This is the post fourth. That's right. It's been two weeks off. Something or well a week oh. off. I don't know. It's been a while. Oh, Kai spotted your new door. Yep. I'll, I'll fill you guys Aaron all in on, set. on what's going on. Created over a new here. set inside of the garage. <laughs> to make the garage look more homey. That's right. <laughs> Hope everybody had a, a good week last week. If you're in the U.S., hope you had a great and safe holiday weekend. I'm going to one-up them and say I hope you had a great week even if you weren't in the U.S. Oh, wow. Yeah, that came off as kind of jerkish of me, didn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, if you're right. from... I enjoy how how international we are. It's, I love all you guys. Very very international. <laughs> Missed you too, I feel Andy. More, more cultured. I feel more cultured just being here. Well, I, I just want to point cultures. out that uh, I logged on the chat a little bit late, but just in the last minute, uh, I have welcome texts in three different languages already. So that says something. Oh, hey, Andy. Missed you, too. I have too many screens. I got a new thing that holds my my laptop up, and so I have, like, an iPad and a laptop and a screen, and stuff's starting to... My, my desk is smaller than my series of desks, or of my series yeah. of monitors. Uh -huh. So they're just sort of... Like, I'm overlapping. I'm shuffling my monitors together. Yeah, I got, I got that going on, too, where I got... Because uh, I have the streaming computer with two monitors, my extra monitor iPad. It's... It's definitely a full six foot table. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's do this thing. Hello and welcome. If you haven't been here before, I'll let you know where you arrived. Uh, this is the SketchUp Friday afternoon, well, Friday live stream. For some of you, it's evening. Some of you, it's Saturday morning, which blows my mind. But welcome, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. My name, if we haven't met, is Aaron with me in my ear and your speakers is Jody. Hey, hi everybody, hello. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna hop in and model some stuff. We're gonna model an airbrush. Um, this was actually a requested model. So last week, Jody put up a post in our forum, forums.sketchup.com if you're not already on there asking what would be a good idea of something to model, and one of them was airbrush. And it just seemed kind of timely for me. I just recently started getting into airbrushing, so I figured I kind of know how an airbrush goes together, so let's go with that. So that's kind of oh, how I, it worked. I, I totally thought they said hair brushing. I was, no, oh. okay, I'm completely confused now. It's, sorry, I, I wouldn't want you to feel left out, so. <laughs> I don't understand hair brushes. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Jody is voluntarily hairless from the ears up. So. From the ears up. Yeah. <laughs> I outgrew my hairline. <laughs> so we are going to uh, hop in here. Um, I do want to, where's my, where's my cursor? There we go. Uh, mention this. So we're gonna, I did throw a couple of files up on our forum. So again, if, you, if you're not already there, forums.sketchup.com, uh, it's just a couple images of kind of what I'm thinking about modeling. Uh, I don't have any exact, it's not machine drawings, I don't have exact precise uh, values or anything like that, but this is kind of the model of airbrush I want to, to model. This is like a $250 Iwata airbrush. Uh, this is not something I have. But I really like this for a couple of reasons. I want to just kind of point out it has, so rather than just being a single cylinder, we do have taper in the cylinder, which is kind of cool. We have multiple pieces. We have some, I guess these are both called knurling, diamond knurling versus this other kind. Ruby, Ruby knurling. Ruby. Is it gemstones? What's it named after? <sighs> yeah. Wait, so is this, was, not, what, is this not what all airbrushes really look like? They do. There's there's a lot of subtle differences. So if I come down to somebody posted, this is, I think, is the same one. But then down here, somebody posted an exploded view. And you can see there's some differences here. Uh, I really like 
this section right here because it's an odd shape. It's a compound shape. Um, it's not like super easy to figure out how to do this. So I wanted to make sure we had that in there. I liked the knurling, 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 knurling. So I mean, it's it's knurled six ways from Sunday, I think is the saying. Um, pretty knurly, dude. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so knurled. So mm. I really liked that. I liked how some of the, a lot of the pieces that were on there. So that's why I picked this specific one. Um, but, uh, yeah, oopsie, you... Andy had to try to show me up, got his up there already. Just kidding, Andy. Oh. Good job. <laughs> so do you plan on like even doing a little bit of text there on the side of that one? I think we should. I think we should make our own custom version. We'll, we'll input our own text on the side. It'd be kind of cool. Oh, and your version actually has threads at the bottom there. It does. Yeah. So I don't know. So a lot of these pieces do thread together. So this piece threads in, uh, all these pieces separately thread on. I don't want to spend the entire two or three hours drawing and cutting threads. So I may leave my threads off to the end and maybe do them, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Um, just because it's a time consuming process. And once you've done one, like I was thinking about that with Adam's Vice, which we did two weeks ago. It was really cool, but we cut the same threads over and over and over again. So I was just like, I was thinking there's more stuff here that's fun besides the threads. So I might, I might, I want to say chicken out, but I'm not really scared. It's just, I want to, I want to do other stuff. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, I have been, I have been neglecting. Hey guys, how are you doing? How's everybody? So happy, happy to have you guys here. Uh, Keggy, Keggy, is asking what the white spots on my keyboard are. It's they're hard to see, but they're actually shortcut stickers. So I actually have on here. If you've ever been to an event where SketchUp's at, one of the things we hand out is shortcut stickers, and they're little tiny uh, icons of SketchUp tools. So what you can do is you can put them on your keyboard to show. You know, if I if I hit the Q key here, I also have the little rotate symbol on there, so I can just hit that, and I know that that's my shortcut key. They're kind of fun. It's a great way to learn shortcuts. Um, not a requirement, of course, for SketchUp, but it is, is kind of nice. Mine are actually have been on there so long. My laptop's about three years old, and they're starting to wear wear off. So uh, it means I need well, a new laptop. And it, it's not necessarily a way to learn shortcuts, but a way to map or let you remember where you assigned them. Because you could stick your, your erase key or your rectangle key on the key or the right. yeah. umlaut if you have umlauts on your keyboard <laughs> they, they, they constantly use umlaut yeah uh so that's what, that's what they those also are. known as also known as rock dots yeah um <laughs> so yeah that's what those are um yep i need uh, colin's harassing me but uh they, they are cool and they're they're good they're also a good thing to talk to people about you know they do Spark that conversation it was kind of neat. I did want to point out somebody actually already caught it from the intro screen. I did move the studio indoors. It's supposed to be 102 in Longmont today, I think. And uh, up till now, since since the pandemic started, I've been broadcasting this from my garage, which was a little cold at the beginning, and then it got pretty comfortable, and it started to get a little toasty. And uh, I decided 100 degrees out in the garage was just not not a good decision somebody out there would have to call 911 when I fainted on camera or something like that. It would have been bad. So, uh, yeah, so I moved up upstairs into the house. So I do have a little more climate control. <laughs> this, will be better. this will be better than what, uh, what was happening before, hopefully. But yeah, I, don't, I also don't have the uh, thermometer on my desktop anymore. So you know. yeah, I thought that was a, a test clock. Uh, anyhow, um, anyway, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we will get this thing going. Um, thanks for coming. Let's, let's hop in. Let's start modeling. Okay. So, uh, I am, I'm going to set the stage here. I am using SketchUp 2020, the release version of SketchUp. I am using it with just my Logitech wireless mouse and 
my Space Mouse Enterprise 3D mouse over here. 3D mouse just lets me move in 3D space like this uh, without having to use my mouse. Kind of nice because it makes for nice smooth animations for you guys. And for me, it frees the mouse up while I zoom and move around. So while I pan Ooh. Laura over here, I could come up here and click a new command and she's there ready for me when I get back here with that new command. So uh, Space Mouse is very nice. It's not a requirement to run SketchUp, but it does make for nice, easy presentations. And if you're a designer, it could be one of those things that pushes you to just kind of the next level of productivity. I wanted to throw that out I there at the beginning, rather than waiting until hey, I didn't, I didn't see the comment prompting that, uh, I'm, that little tangent. Man, I had a week off. I'm on top of it now. <laughs> Don't hold me to that. All right, let's do this. Um, so what I want to do is a lot of times you guys have seen this, I import my reference images as watermarks. And I just kind of stick them down in the corner and let them sit there. I'm thinking about doing this one a little bit differently. I, I'm not going to model the scale. Um, I will, I'll, I'll try to remember with your help to scale everything back down afterwards. But right now I'm thinking I want to just import that big airbrush image and just make it nice and big. And then I can start tracing the basic pieces right off of that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go uh, import and I'm going to go to my desktop and grab that airbrush and use it as an image. Drop it here and just make it, like I said, nice, nice and big. The bigger I do it, the easier it's going to be to do like the knurling and those kind of pieces. I'm not really worried about resolution. Resolution is not, not terribly important for me in this um, just because I really just need the broad shapes. I'm not really worried about too much else besides that. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to pick the center line of this airbrush right now. So I want to figure out where the center is because a lot of these shapes, I am only want to draw half of the shape that I get copied and, and spin it around a circle. So I'm going to put two things on here, a line that's the center and a circle that I can use as a reference before I start drawing actually any shapes. So to find the center here, I could come in here and ballpark. It's kind of hard to tell because I got so many reflections. It's, it's just so shiny. So Ooh. what I'm thinking of is going to a spot where I can clearly see the top and bottom of the brush and draw a line vertically like that. And that's going to give me a real simple center line that I can just pull this way and this way and get rid of that line. All right, there we go. So now that is my center line. And down here at the end that of way, that, what's that? Did you put your little sticky Aaron up there in the corner so you don't accidentally? I yeah, I have, okay. I have him right here. So I try to try to keep stuff out of, see, you can still see Laura according to my screen and confirmed. Yeah, my, my 2D pink paper Aaron head is <laughs> right there. All right, so I'm gonna put a circle here because I'm going to be doing a lot of follow me. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least nine or 10 pieces that all run along this main uh, center line. So all of those are going to be created by creating half of their profile and then spinning them. Some of them, like this main body, of course, I'm going to start by creating this tube, but then I will come back in and you have this cut out here these pieces dropping down. So more work will be done, but initially it'll be uh, follow me based off of this and a circle I create. So I'm gonna come in and create a circle and I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. I'm gonna go to 48 sides and I'm gonna put that st straight out from that line. There we go. That there's no actual significance that that's never going to get used, but it will just be the constant piece that I use to reference when I do my follow me's. All right. Enough, enough explaining of doing things. <laughs> Here we go. So I want to start with, like I said, I don't want to spend a whole ton of time, uh, doing threads. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of stub out geometry that could be threaded and then uh, just leave it as it is. So right here. So for this half right here, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to take this line all the way down to here 
and I'm making a tube. I'm going to turn on x-ray so you can see this a little bit easier. So I'm making a tube, so I'm just going to come down that much and then run that back up to here. All right. Now, the other thing I want, like I said, I, have, I do have a section that sits inside this that is threaded. So I'm going to come draw something like this. And then I'll use the same, same size, whatever that is. Is there a particular reason you're favoring this technique versus the pushing using basically using follow me or I mean push pull and working your way down the length of the cylinder? I probably could do that pretty easily with this particular one. Actually, I think that's going to be more like this. I have a feeling that tapers at the end. Like that. Um, the, this one's pretty simple because this will just be a cylinder, absolutely. I could push pull this from a circle. The rest of these, this piece tapers down, this is rounded on the end, these pieces taper. So the rest of these really don't do that, so I figured I'll just do them all with this. So with that, I'm going to grab the circle, say follow me, click on this shape, and there's our initial airbrush cylinder. I'm going to triple click it and make it a component. I'll just call it the body. All right, one piece down. And I can still work, I can still change this too. So I do have the ability to come in here and go, oh, okay, hold up, like right here. So this is threaded. So this piece actually goes over. So this needs to have a threaded spot sticking out just like what I have on the front. So let's do this. I'm gonna grab this piece and this piece. I'm going to copy it over here. And then bring that back in. So then I do have, oh, I have one, I have a problem here. That's this face right here. Yeah, probably should have noticed that earlier, but uh, let's go ahead and grab that and smooth it. All right, so there's the initial body of our, our piece. Now, with that as a separate component, I can come over here maybe I'll do this too. I'll create a tag. I could tag each piece individually just to turn, just to make it real quick to turn it on and off. Let's do that. I'll just say this is on the body tag and I can just flip that on and off as I model. Uh, Cause I want to, I want to reference that for sure as I make this next piece. Cause I want to go, okay, so turn visibility on and off. I'm going to take this out a little bit for my knurling, like that. And then this line is straight for a while and then comes down like Sneaky little taper. that. And then it's going to come in like this. And it goes over underneath. This is another thread piece that goes onto the back. So I'm just gonna take that over like that. It too is hollow. So I wanna make sure, I'm gonna grab this piece and this piece and offset it to the same spot that, same thickness I had there, like that. There we go. Connect that back up. And then, I'll take this over to here, bring it up to here. So this is where I'm tracing around the existing group with this piece like that. There we go. Now, same thing. I'll grab my circle over here. 
follow me with this shape right here. And there we go. You know, there was a, a time in the early days of SketchUp, like you go to a, a trade show, people hadn't seen SketchUp before, and you'd do follow me, and you'd, just, you'd get audible gasps from people watching you. Whoa! I feel like follow me is kind of that now when you do a, a clever thing like that. In fact, Snake Eye DIY actually commented on Twitch about that. <laughs> He'd never seen your, your follow me with a circle. There you go. That's, that's, that's the stuff. Quick and easy lathing. All right, make that a new component. Um, so why did you name this Untitled? Oh, kick me right in my insecurities. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, probably a good good idea. Dave's here, so you can start knurling whenever you want. Don't tell Dave I decided not to do threading. <laughs> no threads, no knurls. No threads. Super smooth. We're going to knurl it. We'll knurl it, I promise, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to worry about threading so much. All right, I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm just going to use this surface. So I am using hidden geometry right here. There is a hidden line. It's smoothed, but I don't have to turn it on to snap to it. I can just go right there. Come up like this. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna set in just slightly. Then this will be my knurled section. I'll come back out, and it looks like I'm gonna draw a line this way, and I'm gonna go to where the end is. Draw a line this way, and I can try doing an arc here. Let's see if I if I do as I do an arc like this. That's not too bad. I'm gonna use. Uh, Bezier curves. So Bezier is technically, it is an extension, uh, but it's one of those almost native extensions, I guess I would call it. I don't know. It's a tool that you're probably going to want to use. Um, this piece, I'm going to bring down to here. that did you say this this one does not look the same as your airbrush or is this no it's, it is different to... uh i was commenting on the forum that i do not have <clears throat> an airbrush as nice as this mine is is less nice <laughs> see my ignorance is doesn't realize there's a different version of niceness between airbrushes well, like anything, I think there's oh. a a degree, right? There's there's a level there's a level of quality of saws or planes, if you will, for the woodworker that's true. type. That's true. Good good materials. So this I think so this is like some some high end special limited edition. I don't know. It probably does stuff that I don't understand or know. It probably drives your kids to school if you need it to. But it's uh, like a $250 airbrush. I was saying on the oh forum, uh, my <laughs> the airbrushes I currently have max out at about 20 bucks. All right. We should get a subscription for airbrushes. I'm sorry. Wrong topic. Anyhow. <clears throat> you can ignore that. Um, yeah, I know it's funny you're talking about expensive tools because I saw Mr. Richards recently posted on Facebook that his wife asked when he was going to buy some another fest tool uh, she just dropped the brand which was impressive Ooh. with and that's like festool makes if you can think of a woodworking tool and then you increase the price of it by three to four times that's festool oh <laughs> You're like so, you need a table saw all right that'll be two thousand dollars you know there are people out there who uh definitely attribute expense to quality yeah i don't know if it maps to quite the same level of expense, but Festool stuff is is known for being very good about keeping your shop clean. That's something. They've got good dust collection. What's a dust collection like for one of these airbrushes? Non-existent. Dust. Psh. Psh. Actually, I, dust I is probably your enemy <laughs> when you got paint this fine. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I did start airbrushing uh, and I really haven't stressed too much about like 
trying to catch out my airbrushing up to this point has has been from a can you know spray mm. paint and i have like a cardboard box i spray into to keep all the you know a lot of particulates i wear a mask and spray into a box so most of the spray gets caught in there i don't have a fan on or anything like that because I, I try to do it with the door open and everything um but it's it's this is so fine when you go spray i'm like I'm sure it's sprinkling and falling everywhere, but I can't see it, so I haven't worried about it yet. It'll just It's just a matter of time before it causes a problem for me, though, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I hope you're at least wearing a mask. Otherwise, yeah. you're getting nice pink lungs or whatever color oh. you're painting. I, I, just, I presume you paint everything pink. I don't know. I always thought pink lungs were the good ones. <laughs> that's, that's actually that's a good point. <laughs> the black lung pops. That's what you don't want. I don't know what these parts are called. Uh, on the, so this is the this is the nozzle. Take that. Um, so there's, so the, there's the nozzle, the head cap, the nozzle cap, and the needle cap. Okay. So that's one of those. Yeah, that's a thing. This one's a little smaller. This also has a little thread section that goes inside. I'm making some assumptions here because I don't have the actual profile, but uh, you guys are getting it. You're getting it. There we go. I'm not sure why. I still haven't figured out uh, nozzle cap. What was that? <laughs> I'm going to call it the nozzle cap. It's too late. I already typed it. Nozzle cap. Nozzle cap is one of the things. There's a nozzle cap and a head cap. I think you're doing the head cap right now. Awesome. There's a nozzle that goes inside. It looks like a little genie lamp. And then a head cap. And then a nozzle cap. Wow. That's why it costs $250. So many pieces. At the other end, there's a thing called the needle chucking nut, which is awesome. That's the best <laughs> name for a part ever. It is kind of cool that the fact that uh, use something that is a paintbrush basically and has what looks like a tattoo needle in the middle of it. I have been terrified to poke myself with that little needle too. I would be worried I would like bend it. Like I'm always breaking a tip off my mechanical pencils. Yeah. I would expect that I would have that same issue there. Oh, I just typed tip because you said tip. That's the tip now. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna put this on a ref layer. That's what we got thus far. Not too bad considering we're only a couple few minutes in. Um, all right, so I know we got holes. We got two holes that go here and here. This one has a channel that's chopped out of the top, so let's do that. Let's go turn on X-ray. Um, I'm going to put that this. That channel is, is removed to keep the weight down so you can stay <laughs> limber and agile. Oh, my wrist is so tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is a healthy cutout. Um, let me try to make this symmetrical. I'll, I'll just draw half of it. Go to where this is. And where... That's a good way to get symmetry. Cemetery. How do you, how do you pronounce that? Symmetry. No. And then I think I will use uh, Bezier curve again here. Draw this just to keep. There we go. I'll take that. And I will rotate it like this. There we go. That's half the window. Take that and use rotate again, rotate a copy 180 degrees. There we go. I'm going to take that and make it into a group. And I'm going to go into that group, and I'm just going to do this. This is a cutter. I'm going to soften and smooth that to get rid of those lines. And then I can turn the back 
back on. I don't know how this is going to work when it cuts out. This might be ugly, so we'll have to, we'll see. Make sure this is solid real quick. Good. And now I'll just take this one. Use my solid tools to subtract that from this. And all right, there we go. Ah, it looks good. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. You're halfway done. And the rest models itself. So you can leave that single, like a zero thickness line in there and that'll be the needle whenever you get through this whole thing. <laughs> That's true. So it does a spray. All right, so speaking of the needle, uh, yeah, let's turn off. Oh, I have to make this into a new component. Uh, this doesn't really matter that much anymore. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put this on its own. I'm just putting these on on tags as I go through here. I want to turn them off. Uh, this is the piece where the needle ends. So the needle's gonna go from here. And it tapers. Oh, it's so tiny and so sharp. Something like that, and it goes back into somewhere back here. All right. Let's see what happens if I grab that narrow little shape. So follow me again. Oops, get rid of that line. Follow me. Actually, it looks a little too thin, even. What? Let's 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 uh, let's bulk that up just a bit. All right, there we go. Yeah, that I get. All right, we'll take that again. I got, that's the initial, initial geometry for this. Um, and this piece actually should come down to where that needle is. Cause this, this, this piece actually hugs the needle and that's what creates the hole. And when you pull the trigger back, the needle moves back and allows paint to go in or air and paint to go through that hole. So this needle, is how big the hole at the end of this piece should be. Andy did say you don't want to poke your finger with that needle. So apparently I'm presuming he's had some experience there. I was just saying, I, I am so scared of that. So that's kind of how that piece looks, something like that. By the way, there's a whole clinic going on here in the YouTube comments about knurling. It'll be interesting to see how much these suggestions that are bouncing around are going to map to what you're doing. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I do it the right way. Who let me type Noxel cap? Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> I like that. I I thought that was the isn't that the cap, capital of Tennessee or something like that? Knoxel. <laughs> John he was on Jackass. Johnny Knoxel. So Dave's curious if you find it easier to model it because you know generally how they work. Um I have Dave some reference much. and that definitely helps. Like knowing somewhat uh what's going on definitely does make a difference. It makes it a little bit easier. Like I said, this is not exactly how mine works, but being the type of person that I am, one of the first things I did when I 
got the airbrush I just ordered was I opened it up and took it apart. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I immediately wanted to know what all the pieces were, how they worked, and how best to injure myself with them. That's really what this is all about. I mean, that's all a tool is, is just a different way to draw blood. It's, yeah, that, that's that's a solid solid statement. I buy that. All right. Although it seems like I'm more likely to draw blood from chunks of wood than I am from the actual metal thing I'm using. Yeah, that's fair. Wood is a, a dangerous tool for sure. So this piece right here, so this chunk right here is a clamp, like uh, you're talking about a uh, uh, mechanical pencil, same kind of idea. It's a chuck kind of thing that comes out like this, and then this piece tightens over it to clamp down on the needle. And that gives you actually control over how far this piece and this piece together control how far the needle travels back, so it controls how much spray comes out when you pull the trigger back. So I'm going to grab this. Follow okay, me with yeah, that I'm completely confused by my by my mom always did like stuff with with an airbrush mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger. So I saw like saw them used, but I had no idea there was a, a, a reason to like have the, the needle move in and out. Or in fact, the reason was a ne needle. I would just call it a nozzle and presume it works just like a cannon, a spray paint can. I was wrong, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you were. You were. Jeez. It's embarrassing. I just said it on live TV, whatever this is. Broadcast? I don't know. Yeah, broad. Yeah, I just said it to uh, the live. Oh, stream. I could call it a stream, huh? That's true. It's right there in the the tab that I have open. So you guys still get regular TV at your house, right? Do you still? Guys still doing that or are you all no we haven't really done that for we so haven't done that for a while so your, kids are, your kids are clueless about commercials too then yeah every once in a while we'll 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 hop on to watch a show live and uh yeah yeah, yeah they're uh it's usually a little bit of a, a surprise to them oh yeah my kids get mad I'm like that's the reason shows you watch are 22 minutes long is because they're leaving eight minutes there for commercials. It's so true. I don't. I don't know if mad. It seems appropriate. That seems. <laughs> I'm yeah, so, I mean, not like I am not so like angry about this. TV mad. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm gonna take a little bit of Wait, liberty a... with this piece right here because I'm just gonna bury it into the airbrush here it runs somewhere in here and does some stuff that i don't really fully understand but uh yeah it's along those lines looks like kai kai approves of your take it apart when you first get it and put it back together so you know how, how, how it works that's right how else how else are you going to know what I, not I think to mess I commented with on this before that that's the nice thing about buying a secondhand thing is invariably you've got to fix something that was broken before they second handed it to you. That's true. And so you're disassembling and learning all your parts. If you're like me, you disassemble it several times before you finally get it working. But all I right. don't think I would dis I don't think I would want to secondhand disassemble it and fix it airbrush with needles that poke your finger. Yeah, that doesn't sound awesome. All right. With that I'm going to switch gears and we're going to hop in Dave, to this guy. Dave said Dave said he put a close up of the rear end for knurling when that time comes. Okay. We will I'm going to get the the rest of there's a bunch of pieces to this body right here. Um, so I'm going to get those roughed in and then we'll we'll start the knurl train. All right. So, let's see. I guess we can turn off everything but our yeah, because I don't want to. I don't want to lose my reference, so I don't want to turn that off. Oop. Put this on its own layer. Also, oh, oh. knee lid. Oh boy. 
Why is there no spell check in SketchUp? All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I'm gonna draw a line across like this. Find the center. And then, actually with this one, why don't I just, I'll just do what you're saying, Jody. I'm just gonna come in here with a 48 sided circle. Pull it out like that. Do that. And then I can, since this, is, I this is literally you. just a tube, I'll just intersect that. I was just, ask, that. I was just asking what Christopher Morin was asking. I was repeating his question. I, oh. I can't take credit for it. Okay. Well, okay. Thanks for doing it. You bet. You bet. Nonetheless. So that inside circle is a little too big. So I wonder if I could do this. Get rid of that. And I'm going to copy this. This way. So there's, there's definitely, there's definitely a reason to do something like, uh, have dimensions. <laughs> I, I definitely see the upside to it because uh, there's some stuff where I'm like, all right, I want to I want to put that same dimension I used before, but before I winged it, so sometimes I got to wing it again. I think it's wang. I think it's wang. Wang it. it. Wanged it. No, that didn't, that, that didn't sound right at all. That doesn't sound good. All right, there we go. Oh, oh, come on, man. Oh, I deleted the wrong side. It's all falling apart. Oh no, this is the right side. Okay. Slightly smaller circle, not a bigger circle. Cool. So when you, if ever you get to this point where you have all these broken lines and stuff all over, one thing you can do is just make a copy of the geometry you want, slide out of the way. Then I can come in here, triple click, or group select probably, because that's loose geometry. Just delete all that, and then I'm back to having just that face I wanted. I do that a lot, I feel like. All right, so that goes to right about there. Because I copied that interior, whoops. I don't like that. Well, I'll just clean it up after. Because uh, that was the same, if I bring that right to the top point of the circle, like right there, then my, my interiors of my tubes should just perfectly meet. Look at that. That's going to be nice. Uh, grab all this, soften it real quick. All right. And now I could have done this with solid tools, but I was just curious, since I'm in the group, in the context, if I was just to grab all of that, say intersect face with selection, Outside looks real good. Let's see how hard it is to clean up the inside. I'm going to turn off my reference. So this means I want to get rid of this. This. Well, this may just, just may have got a little more difficult. Oh, here we go. Get rid of that. Yeah, solid tools probably would have been quicker at this point. Um, just because I gotta keep my head stuck inside this little teeny tube to do all this cleanup work. Solid tools still would have left extra geometry. All this geometry on the inside still would have been a separate piece I have to clean up, but it would all been connected. So I would have been able to just triple click and uh, hit delete to get rid of all of it. Yeah, I was, I was hoping this was going to go super smooth and then I was going to offer some sort of anecdote about how, how great the uh, intersect with model has always been. I still like it. I mean, nobody should think anything. Sometimes it's, it's the best way to go. I mean, it did exactly what I wanted. It's just the cleanup is a little more work than 
solid tools would have been. We'll do the next intersection with solid tools so we can compare. All right, let me get rid of this piece, get rid of this piece. this and then what I should be able to do once I got all those extra pieces gone if I run a uh, solid inspector it should offer to get rid of all those stray edges and then I should have nice thanks Tom Tom are you just saying thanks in spirit or is he actually here uh, no in spirit thanks because okay. he's the one that made that plugin that just made that so easy for you he did. I mean, he might be here, but if he is, he's do He's, he's just watching. He's not talking. So when he's talking. I can't see it. I guess at this point. Let me try running that again. Sometimes. No, nah, still not. So it's keeping those edges. So I'm going to go ahead and run a different extension, which is cleanup, and I'm just going to say merge faces that should get rid of a lot of that stuff and then if I hit that again it'll get rid of those extra lines not that any of that's required I could totally leave that those pieces all separate but uh, yeah that's that's better for sure all right put that line back in I deleted that line when I did that cleanup just now because I guess I could do this as a separate piece Offset this about halfway. Pull that out just to give something for this next piece to thread onto. All right, so that that's I'm just leave that. That'll be the, the body for right now. Now here's one of the pieces that I was most excited to do, which sounds super geeky, but um, I'm gonna try. Let's see if I can do this with an arc. All right, so there is my arc. What I wanna do now, I'm gonna actually take that last line and go go long. So that line goes in here, and I'm gonna do the same thing right here. I'm gonna take that long like that. Now, what I wanna do is basically make like a half circle, a, a bent over piece, like with a profile, something like that, like a U, that's going to follow along that geometry. Um, so you could use the follow U tool. Ooh, somebody's on fire today. <laughs> Somebody, somewhere. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know what you're doing. Well, but... you did say it was supposed to be over 100 degrees outside. So. <laughs> oh, that, that's a good excuse, I suppose. So what I want to do is I want to create that shape. Um, I want to create it. So this piece I ran long here. I can actually turn the body off for this. I don't actually need this. So this line I ran long. I'm going to create a line perpendicular to it. I'm going to make this well bigger than it has to be. So I want to make this like just a big intersecting piece that I can come back and clean up. Um, I'm going to draw a line up. Actually, I do want to turn that body back on because I want to go up to about about halfway up this piece. There we go. The same thing here. All right, so there's a face. And then I'm going to go stick an arc. Rotate this piece right here up to here only so that I have uh, a point right there, because that right there is what I want to make my arc. So I'm going to go from here to here, pull it out. All right, I'm going to take that. And I don't have, so because of my, the way my axis is, axis, did I say that right? Uh, I don't have a way. Singular, axis. 
to take it and make a copy of it so I'll make the other half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click right here and drag my cursor up this. That sets the center of that rotation. And then I can take this piece and flip it around 180 degrees. And now I have, there's the outside of the shape I wanna run. I don't really actually understand what this does. <laughs> I, I, I'm guessing maybe the air or the paint goes separate. I don't know. I don't really know what this shape does. If anybody in the, in the comments knows, uh, let me know. This, the fact that there's a hole right here is kind of weird because I believe this is all pressurized. So I'm guessing it pu pushes the air or the paint through here. But uh, anyhow, I'm just going to make it a solid chunk right here. What I will Actually, do... yeah, I'm looking at the looking at the dot, the the source image, and it is called solid chunk. Oh, good. Nailed it. Didn't even know. I'm going to grab these three lines. So I have my arc, line segment, line segment, and I'm going to say extension, weld. So I have one solid piece there, and then I can just say follow me with this shape, and then I get that. So it is well bigger than I need. It goes way beyond. But you can see there it is. It fills that little shape in that I, that's really the only part that I need. So now the question is, how do I cut that down so it's just what I have to put in there? So I'm going to start by grabbing all of it and reversing it, softening it. So clean it up first. Uh, now, what I need to do is cut it down so it meets here and here. I'm going to do that using solid tools again. So I'm going to triple click, make that into a group. And I'm gonna do it the opposite of the way I have been because I actually want to use my the body here as the cutter. So this is gonna be the piece that's going to cut apart the other thing. Um, I have to get rid of this solid line. So I'm gonna draw a new line on the outside because when I run Solid Inspector, it gets rid of that. Okay, now I will take my body right here. I'm gonna say trim this. Now, what that did, if I come in here and I click in here, let's hide everything else. That's what it did to that solid piece. So YouTube said that thing is a Venturi, which apparently is, there's something called the Venturi effect. And so that is an actual deliberate piece. And then everybody else chimed in and said that, yeah, it helps like redirect the air and the I don't know. It has some. It has some necessary effect. Although I'm now curious because you said yours doesn't have that, right? Your cheap no. version, or even this. So how does that work for people that? Well, like I said, it's a it, necessary part. Let me get rid of these three pieces. I'm just gonna triple click, delete. Triple click, delete. Oop. And now I have just this part. So with mine does. So that's the big thing is this this cutaway right here. I don't know what this does, but I'm assuming that the air travels to here. With mine, it comes up like this, and this is all solid. I don't have this window cut in mine. So I, I think this is glamour. I think this is showing off. I think this is like a convertible yeah, winter yeah. right here. No, as mentioned previously, it's they're just reducing weight to keep you from getting fatigued. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking something like that. I mean, it does make sense, right? Because I mean, air moves to fill whatever space you have, but if you have a 90 degree, that probably takes more pressure than to travel along. I don't know. I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. I'm going to stop. Chris, Chris Trebacher said that, that most don't have that hole there. So right. you just happen to get a source image. It's yeah. crazy. It's fancy. It's extra fancy is what that is. Okay, so I'm going to grab. So here's how I'm going to get this this geometry all together. So right now it is a separate piece than this. So I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to snake eye snake eye on Twitch thinks that maybe it could, that could be a way to clean. Maybe it's, it, maybe that's what it's useful. It could for. be. That's possible. That. Um, anyway, back to it. I'm going to delete this piece and this piece and all of uh, this. Is there an extra piece there? Okay, so all I have is this, I just want that shell piece. And I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna triple click, 
and Command X to cut it. When you cut everything out of a group and you close that group, the group gets deleted. Now I'm going to come in context into my body and I'm going to say edit, paste in place. It's going to put it right back where it was. For the most part, it looks like it intersected pretty good, but right here, for whatever reason, I didn't get a line breaking it. So I might try to grab all this and say intersect face with selection. There we go. Now I got a good break. I'm going to save. I've heard it's cool. Cool thing to do. And now if I peek inside. I didn't think you did that anymore. Eh, every once in a while. Just, you know, for fun. All right. So there's my straight edges from that. So Christopher Backer name dropped Iwata as the brand, which actually I think maybe yeah. that's what... You're That's what this to. is. Yeah, they do. They're unique, I guess. Yeah, but not all Iwatas have this either, I don't think. No, and they also all don't have that little metal chunk along the edge there. A lot of them are just a T like yours. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do, I don't really understand low quality image, why I have a double neural here. I'm assuming this spins. Uh, and this is solid for holding to, to tighten your hose to. So I'm thinking, I'm just going to model it all as one piece, though. Um, start here. You know, you, you have my blessing. Oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, let's grab this and use it again. down like that I had a little line on the inside so that's why my face didn't close <clears throat> all right so I need another circle right here 48 sides just like all the rest grab it Andy's recommending you you look at the high-res version that he had already put on the forum that you ignored I saw it yours didn't, didn't well, do but you could have used it. it. <laughs> anyway, it's higher resolution. I know, it's better. I'd say my image was all that. I know mine's low res. Um, you know, I had mentioned that my mom used to do this, but really what always stands out to me when I think about airbrushing is going to the fair when I was a kid and those guys would be airbrushing t-shirts or whatever or leather jackets and you uh -huh. just see them back there psh, psh, psh. I thought you were going to say uh, airbrushing kids faces because that <laughs> that sounds like a bad idea <laughs> well with makeup you to I close mean, your I... <laughs> eyes jeez <laughs> but that's a pretty popular thing to, to do I think they use brushes, though, don't they? I don't know. I haven't been a kid in years. Years. It's just like face paint, but uh, it gets applied with a brush. I was thinking more your kids, Jody, not you. Oh. Remember them? My bad. Yeah. <laughs> and they do get... I always get paint in their eyes whenever I'm using the airbrush on them. So. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. All right, so I'm going to take this piece, similar thing, uh, reverse my faces, pull this so it laps completely inside. <clears throat> Make that a group. Use this to trim. Oop, this is not solid for some reason. Okay. Use that. Trim this. Beautiful in here awesome let's grab that delete it triple click command x come in here edit paste in place boom and then if i want to i could come in here and get rid of that extra surface so again i know my interior interior of my airbrush is not correct i the only thing i'm really worried about is this main channel that <clears throat> the needle runs down but uh 
uh, I'm, I'm not taking into account how this stuff all works because I don't really know. <laughs> all right. It's coming along, though. This is looking kind of cool. I, I uh... It does have lots of interesting shapes, do you, which you have to kind of manage. Yeah. And that was that was the reason I picked this airbrush specifically, is it because it had some of these unique little shapes. But Follow Me makes a lot of them really easy to do. Okay, this one... The, the, the cup's going to be a little different because I'm going to do, well, actually it's going to be very similar to a lot of the steps I've taken. I'm going to draw a line across. This is getting the perpendicular line, and then I will draw a line perpendicular to that. I'm going to hit the down arrow to lock to perpendicular, and I'm going to run this long like that. All right, I'm going to turn the body off and the needle off. Now, I'm gonna run a line like that. So you're gonna run that line. So would you say there's anything in here, since you've got all these non-perpendicular shapes, is there any, any particularly useful skill or tool or process for doing this that's helpful? Um, for those following along at home? Per, uh, the, Inferencing is huge. I mean, and, and I mean, anybody who uses SketchUp should know inferencing is a huge thing to keep an eye on. But that being able to, you know, hover over this line and then snap to the magenta snap, which is the perpendicular snap, is so big as soon as you go off axis. So a lot of this stuff on axis, on axis, on axis, but uh, so many of these pieces are just slightly off. Uh, it's really important to watch your inferencing. Um, the other option, of course, would be to make it a group and then set the axis so that it is in that group parallel to the geometry. But when you're making just one piece like this, for me, it doesn't really make sense to do that. It's a lot of work to just do that when inferencing works just as well. All right, I'm going to use Bezier again. Go there and there. All right, so that is the outside of my paint cup. I'm, I am, again, intentionally running it long. This is where that line came down and hit the center. Um, I'm going to grab, this is hollow because it is a cup. So I'm going to grab these lines and I'm going to offset them something like that. And this does have kind of a lip on it like that. So that is the shape. I want to spin that around the circle. I'm going to put my circle right here. Uh, here's where I'm going to have an issue because I can't easily, my, my circles are going to be this way or this way. See that? So now I've got to the point where it probably makes more sense to triple click, get all this, put it into a group, go into that group and say, all right, Let's re reassign the axes. Ax at. Now I'm all self-conscious. Dang it. <laughs> I, I haven't corrected you. I haven't been Reass today. I've been so I know. good. I see you. Out of, you're just right out of the profile of my eye. I see your picture over there. And I'm like, ax, oh, Jody's going to do something. He's going to say something. No, I won't. Reassign the axis. I don't really care about the green axis, but I want my red along here. So then I can come in here with a circle, snap it to red, pull that out, and I can use that along with follow me to create that cup. Okay, that looks awesome. I'm gonna triple click. I'm going to say toggle smooth. Um, and that is what I'll run into the other piece. Uh, let's see, how, would I, how do we wanna do this next part? Um, All right, let's grab Dave this. Said, Dave said you could have used Chris's perpendicular face tool to add that circle. Perpendicular face tool. I love that there's so many meanings for the word face, so I get a completely different picture than I'm sure what the plugin really is supposed to do. Is that like a, I, I'm just trying to think if I've used that. That just snap, perpen, oh, perpendicular to a face, I almost said. 
Mm. Yeah. That would have been good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to draw Hindsight. a profile here of what this cap looks like. It's just kind of a friction fit cap. It may dome, actually. I can't remember. Nah, that's good enough. Uh, this will get knurled, but this geometry right here. This leg up just a little bit. So that just kind of friction fits right inside this section. Just just snaps on to keep your keep your paint inside. Oh, come on. Something like that. All right. That's enough messing with it. It's not that detailed of a so I'm gonna grab that again follow me with this and now I can take this reverse face so now I have a chunk of geometry and a chunk of geometry inside a group the best way to get out of here is going to be to triple click make this a component I'm gonna call this the cup cap Triple click here, make this a new component. I'm going to call this just the cup. And now what I can do is grab this, which is a group that holds both components, explode it, and it's just going to leave those two pieces laying right where they were, where they should be. Now, I'm trying to think of the best way to make this collide with uh, the body because what I want to do here is I want the outside face to intersect here but I want the inside face to intersect here and here so what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to grab the geometry from here cut it come here just like I did before edit paste in place. And rather than just grabbing all the geometry, last time I did a intersect with selected, I just grabbed everything and said just intersect it all. I think this time instead, I'll just grab these two pieces. So that's not grabbing the inside of the cups. So just those two pieces and say intersect faces with selection. So that should break it. So now I can come here, delete this inside. No, I wanna leave that. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that. And now I want to grab this because I want to intersect this with this and this. So what goes in that little, that little hopper up there anyway? This is where the paint goes. Like you just pour in like a little, yep. little dollop of paint? That's it. Spin it up first. Oh. There we go. And with that, now I can delete, I can erase this edge right here, but that'll give me that cup sitting on top. If I look down here, there's the hole there. So yeah, what happens is that paint sits down in a little spot with the needle and the air flows through there. And then it sucks it along. The, yeah, the paint's released into the airflow. There we go. Boom. All right. It's like and a little then, tiny toilet bowl. Yeah. If you paint it with poop or pee. That's not. Oops. Sorry. It happens. More often than I'd like. All right. So we're pretty close. The last piece really, and then we can start start Neural Fest 2 2020 is right here. So this is a channel that's cut out from here to here. And then this trigger sits down inside of it. So I think what I want to do is I want to put a couple here. Let's turn the body off. 
Oops, wrong, wrong clicky. All right, turn the body off and then we can actually just kind of, just for reference real quick. All right, so that's where the trigger sits. Nope, that does not look right at all. I was drawing the backside. Try that again. All right. Oh, that's got to be embarrassing. Have my backside where I don't need it. Ew. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to make another cutter, something like this. Make that a group. I have that a theory of outside because it's up to 72 in here. How hot is it outside right now? Very. My watch says that it's 91, but who knows? All right. I'm going to take that now and I'm going to say subtract that. Oh, this is not a solid for some reason. Let's check that. A couple stray edges. Done. All right. Take that. Subtract that from here. That'll give me just a, a channel in the surface. It's not actually cut down. And then what I was thinking is just taking that. That seems too wide. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do this instead. Let's take this down to like here and take this one up to here and then we'll pull this in like that. Yeah, that's better. So that'll be just a nice straightforward chop, just chopping a chunk right out of it. Um, grab this, subtract it from this and that'll give me I hope just a nice clean, yeah, nice clean channel. Again, because I used, <clears throat> excuse me, because I used uh, solid tools, it did rename this to difference. So I do want to go back here, uh, make that into a component again and overwrite my old component. Replace my existing component and put that back on the body tag. That completes this piece with the exception of knurling. Uh, one last piece I want to create <clears throat> is the trigger. So I'm going to draw a line like that. I'm going to come here and draw a line parallel to that. I'm going to draw a line this. I'm drawing a 2D uh, mock-up of what I actually, oops, that's not going to work. So much for drawing something in 2D. Uh, that's funny. I was, I was about to make a comment about how new users often will start trying to draw in 2D like that. And then all of a sudden there's lines all over the place and yeah. then you did it. It, it was a, a visual, uh, representation of the problem way to way to educate i try i try son of a gun all right let's try this again this way and then we'll go right about here parallel to this okay there we go that's that's what i need now we're going to dive in and start detailing <laughs> that 2D mock. All right, I'll make that a group. All right, so the way this thing works is, first off, this piece coming up, we'll just, I'm just gonna take, a model half of this, that's a good idea. So I'm gonna come up like this, and we can actually, 
let's extend let's extend this down into the airbrush because that's you know actually where it goes like that we'll bring this up a little bit and now this one this section right here is actually an oval or, or circle really it's a circle <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to draw some reference lines out like this. Just for my own reference, I'm going to put a circle right here in the middle. Pull that all the way, does that go all the way up? Oh, that's arbitrary though, don't want to use that. There we go, awesome. If I push pull that through like that, then I get more of that nice intersectingness. So I'm going to intersect this circle with these faces around here. So you're just using all the intersect with faces today, just uh, just to show that it can be done. Is that, that I guess cool? I'm just I'm just feeling it with this particular model. I don't know why I can't I can't okay. can't tell you why. All right. All right. Just uh, just all cause. Right. You do you. That's. I mean, it's the can't, only can't that's do anybody else. The only one I know how to do. There we go. So it's that's like you haven't really had any good stitching opportunities yet though. I know. I've been I've been able to erase some lines, so that's that's something. Eh, <clears throat> it's just not the same. It isn't. It's not the same. Uh, <laughs> so this actually has some texture on it. Uh, the pad does so if I if I come in here did I ever make that a component nope it calls the trigger I'm gonna put it on a tag called a trigger or triugger oh come on man turn the triugger off um it's pronounced trigger so this is actually has like not full on knurling but just kind of like ribs across this part of the trigger so i'm going to do that the simplest way i can. oh you know what else i should do i should probably put more than half a trigger on there so we can go get rid of that face no actually i'm gonna leave that face in because i'm going to grab all the geometry above that line and i'm going to use curic mirror to option mirror that on the bottom and then I can just get rid of my redundant or not redundant but scene lines that one will get softened these two will get deleted okay so now with that I want to come right here and I just want to make just like little just a couple little bumps so I have a theory I don't know if this is gonna work or not but I'm gonna come this is kind of stitching okay yeah. I'm gonna I mean, it's boring stitching, but it is. It's but it's something. stitching. It's something. Jump up one more. Have you uh, have you saved lately? Yeah. Seems like it. Good. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> All right. So I'm just take those lines, and I'm going to move them like that, just enough to get that little. Oh, well, most of them worked. These two worked. What? Why, why is that broken there? Uh, see, mm. this is what happens when you let mm. the computer stitch. Yeah, computer uh, didn't know what it was doing. Computer likes to show off how smart it is with doing numbers, and so it overcomplicates. Uh, man, sometimes. So Ms. Mr. Moore post actually a little tutorial over on the Discord uh, stream posted a picture of his created a, a, a how to knurl oh nice yep that's just about the point yeah. we're at huh yeah. Gotta, i'm not, I'm not stalling knurls. i'm not stalling no of course not knurling's fun knurling's a good time so there's only nine steps uh in the tutorial he made so oh. you know nine steps okay okay be simple i can do it nine steps what I'm seeing you do right now does not map to what he 
Okay. No, this was this was not a neural. This is supposed to be just a quick and easy bumpiness. Right, that's We're not a real neural. Quick and easy. Okay. Wow. Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to start with the simple neurals. So, uh, if I recall correctly, so I'm done. I'm done tracing the image. Where's up? There we go. Whoa. Sorry. Apologize if anybody got sick with that one. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this, this. Uh, set that up there. All right, so we have, is this still called neural? I was gonna ask Dave this. Dave's a, a neuraler. Um, so here, 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 and here, it's just vertical pieces. You know, it's just uh, triangles going around. Whereas this piece and this piece are actually diamond neurals. Is it still called a neural if it's just like that? I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm really hoping somebody will help me. I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath to see what the phone of friend says. It's still knurling. Dave said it's still knurling. Yep. All right, cool. So I'm going to do this top, the cap first. Um, one thing I do need to know is where the center is. So, because I'm going to, I'm going to use rotate on here. So I'm going to delete this face altogether, and I'm going to use this piece right here. I'm going to divide it, and I'm going to push pull this up ever so slightly. I do want to break that off from the surface below. And then I can take these surfaces. I just wanted to say surface I to sound smart as I made that, but I know that's not the right term. And I'm going to it rotate. Sounded, sounded smart, I guess. About, <laughs> I'm going to rotate about the middle. That's smartish, right? Sure. I'm going to go from here, option, to here, X47. And that's going to give me that little flat knurling. Um, so I do have some issues here. Let's see what Solid Inspector does with that. Nope. I do have to use, uh, I'm going to triple click and use Cleanup's Merge Faces to get rid of all those little tiny things. Okay, so that's one piece of knurling. That's one way we could do it. Um, let's look down here. Let's say we wanted to do something more like a, a V, kind of a, a cut out, so it's like sharpish. I don't know, it shouldn't actually, hopefully it's not actually sharp. Um, so one thing I could do here is on this face, here, I could do this. Go grab, go to the midpoint of one segment and drop a line down perpendicular like that. Ooh, actually, I saw something I want to try instead. Let's see how this goes. All right, so the first thing I want to do, I'm going to walk through this process. I don't know how this is going to work, but I, if, if it works, it, it might be kind of neat. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is that my, my circle has broken. So I have segments here, and it's not a circle, So which is okay. It's not for nothing. Nothing I'm doing does that cause a huge problem, but uh, I do want to select this whole circle. So this is, I've shown this before, but I'm just going to show it again. To get all of that, I'm going to double click on this circle and then I'm going to shift click this piece right here. The problem is this circle is also broken so uh, if I double click here it highlights that whole circle that I need and I could come in here and turn this off but this is still turned on. So by shift clicking the inside right here now I have the circle I want plus this broken circle plus the surface inside and now if I hold down shift option or shift control on windows, it'll give me the minus select. And if I double click on the surface, 
it turns off that and all the connected edges. So that leaves me with just this out here. So I explained it, but normally it's like four clicks to get that circle highlighted, which is nice. And now I'm just gonna offset that just ever so slightly, just a teeny bit. Now, I'm gonna come back in here and do what I was doing, draw a line perpendicular to this piece, and then I'm gonna bring it back up here. I'm gonna bring it back up here. And now, I get rid of that. I'm gonna grab this one. Oh, and I need, I need my center line again. I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna rotate it from here, option to here. I'm trying to decide how, how much extra work I wanna make for myself. Um, I think a bunch, at least try and get a, a good stitching opportunity in. Uh, now I want to get rid of it. How do I get rid of it easy? Let's see. There we go. Delete that. And now I can take this piece. Actually, let's get rid of this. And these. There we go. Those are the pieces I want. Now if I grab these three pieces, rotate that from the center. Where's my center? From here, option to here, 47x, it didn't quite do what I wanted because it didn't break the surface completely. Um, hmm. You're going to go and stitch every one of those. <laughs> I had no idea you were such a stitching fan, Jody. I always thought you were giving me a hard time. I didn't know you really appreciated it. I love stitching. <laughs> um, a thing yeah. happened. I don't know what I just did. Uh, well, just redraw one line. See if that fixes it. Yeah. I would, but I'm literally uh, at some sort oh, of a standstill, and I don't, know, I don't know what I did. Uh, okay. Now I, now I understand why you just took multiple drinks. That's good. So if I'm, you save in the middle of it being locked up and then reopen it, is it just going to be locked up? Did you save the lockup? Oh, I don't know. I guess we can find out. <laughs> All right, I'm good. Five, well, four, three, two. All right, I'm out. Close I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well. That's still there. Oh, well, good thing I have it all on video, so I go back and find out how I screwed that up later. <laughs> That's right. Yay, documented. All right, let's recover that. <clears throat> all right, so here's where I'm at, apparently. I have some extensions that slow down my SketchUp startup. I don't. I have to go through and figure out what it is, but I have somewhere an extension just, that really makes didn't startup we just get drag. This a couple of months ago. Yeah, I did, and then the problem is I, I'm always installing new extensions. So, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna rotate yeah, that. The problem. I know the problem's me. I get it. All right, so I'm gonna take that little triangle. I do believe it was G.I. Joe that said knowing is half the battle. That's right. That Joe fella really knew what he was talking about. I don't understand what the gastrointestinal part has to do with it, though. Gastrointestinal Joe. Ah, uh, got it. All right, let's try this again. So one, two, three, four lines rotated about the middle. 
from this point option to this point. 47 times, there we go. This is what I was thinking would happen. I would do this and then I would be done. Problem with this is that really looks, well, I guess it, if you Super zoom out, it's, it's really not that, it's not as aggressive. Yeah. Well, from my house, it's fine. <laughs> if I grab, if I do grab all of this, one thing that can help is each of these teeth has two pieces up here. So I could actually, if I soften, we'll get rid of half those, but I got to remember this is tiny. So not quite so bad. So that's a different way I could have done that same thing. The one step down from there, I got so many, so much neural. Another, so the, the simpler way of what I just did basically would be to come here, let's go perpendicular. This is gonna have a downside for sure though, because if I take this and rotate this from here to here, 47 more times. Now I have to come through here and do that 47 times. It shouldn't take long. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the bathroom real quick and then get some water and make some tea. I'll be back. That was sarcasm, guys. He's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. Okay, but, but here, okay, but now, now, now I'm thinking, hold up. So this is, this is for comparison. This is my, I'm going to do 47 clicks right now. Just so you could complete, compare this. This is what happens. This is what happens when you don't get to do your stitching. That's right. I got to do something yeah, repetitive. For, yeah. Stimulate my mind, man. Fortunately, it's a double click each time. Ooh, which makes, it's twice as much work. So this is like a, almost a hundred clicks I'm having to do here. So this is an option. Not a good one. No, and the thing I was thinking about is these are, we did two, two different spots. So this one right here, we built up and both these two, we cut in to do the knurling. Cutting in is definitely seeming like more work, but I have, I have a, I wanna try something cause I don't know if this is going to work. Um, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna select this surface I have to, you have to, to I want to unsmooth it so I get my segments back. In order to unsmooth, you do have to have more than just a surface selected. So I'm going to double click, that'll get me the two edges. Now I can turn off smoothing. Wait, why, why are you arguing with me? Did it explode first? Hmm. Weird. I've never, I've never had it resist. <laughs> Usually it does that when I don't want it to happen. All right. Well, we'll just do this real Maybe quick then. Safe. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, oh yeah. Cause I saved recovery. It's asking if I want to overwrite the old one, which I do. Okay, so what I want to do anyhow, it's not a big deal because I, I want to do this anyways. So here is one segment. What I want to do, actually, no, I don't want to soften. It was saving me. So I want to put a line right here. So here's a segment from here to here. I'm going to put a line middle to middle like that. I'm going to take that line and I'm going to copy it or rotate it. Rotate a copy from the middle. Just like I have been before. Option. Turn on hidden geometry and select the hidden. 47X. Now, what that did, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use hidden geometry right here. So what that did was gave me, if I look at hidden geometry, it gave me an extra line in the middle of each of those. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna grab, get more in the middle. I'll go like this, I'm gonna do a selection. I'm gonna use selection toys to select only edges. Turn my hidden back on. 
and now I'm going to scale about the middle. I'm going to come down 0.96 about the middle. Come in this way 0.96. And then I can there we go so another way to do that same inward inward cut neural it still looks so it just looks so aggressive it's like a buzzsaw up close so I got to remember that this is you know if you're not worried about the needle at the end, you're worried about the, the <laughs> jagged teeth grabbing your fingers. <laughs> Carve my finger up trying to take the, the, the tip off. So I'm trying to think of other ways to possibly do that. I guess I could do the opposite of that too. I could come in here, put my line right there. Get my center point. Option, copy that over here, 47X. Don't need this anymore. Oh. Grab that. Select only edge. If you guys don't have selection toys, by the way, you gotta go get it. It's, <laughs> it is the... Especially if you're gonna start doing this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, turn our hidden back on. We'll scale again, option to scale about the middle. All right, and then I can grab all that. All right, so that was a quick neural. That only took a couple seconds. That was pretty quick. That was, that was crafty. They're getting faster. That's right, which is good because I think I still have three more pieces to do. Oh, all right. I'm just going to, I'm going to do it that last way. That was, that was quick. That was easy. Do I have a center point here? Nope. I think the cool thing is I think on this next one, oops, I, I, hit escape there after I did that first one. Gotta make sure to do 47X. That's requirement. Delete that. And I guess you could do that without, oops, I do need that center point. No, I don't. That actually looks less aggressive when I leave those middle lines hidden, though. Yeah, that looks, that looks real nice. Real nice. Yeah, I'm going to leave that. All right, this one, with this, I can actually do both of these together. So I'm going to put one line here, one line here, come over here to get my center line, take both of these, rotate it, from one point option to the next, 47X. I mean, no, tell me no. Here to here, <laughs> rotate. From one point option to the next, 47 times. And now I can come here and I can grab this this select only edges do some stuff in here so i want to oh that's going to make it trickier i right, try that again all right precision selection that's actually one of the spots that uh, a 3d mouse does help 
All right, select only edges, and then we'll scale those out. Let's do the same thing. 0.4. Usually the 3D mouse is, is just for getting attention. That's right. I like I like people to have have or ask as many questions as possible, especially if I can repeat what I've said before. That's fun. Okay, so that single line knurling, I don't know what the I don't know that that's done. <laughs> let's look at how you like do some diamond the knurling of lines in your model just by adding knurling. Okay, so. We actually have two things here, so I want to point this out. This was intentional. So right here, this section that will be knurled is actually raised up from the surrounding area. This right here is actually set down. So this one, I will build my knurls up. This one, maybe I'll cut. Wait, 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 hold up. What's going on here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Exactly. Oh, man. Just had to pump the brakes. Where's my face? Something else to think about, this created one, two extra faces, so almost a hundred extra surfaces, a hundred extra faces were created for this neural as opposed to this neural over here. Just, just something else I was just thinking about. Anyhow. If you uh, care about that, about yeah. such things. Sorry, apologize. All right, so what I'm gonna wanna do here is create a series of raised and lowered diamond sections across one of these pieces. And then I'll take that piece and I'll rotate it around uh, this whole thing. So what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna do this, this. I'm gonna create a little canoe. So there's a little boat that my neurals will sit inside of. I know I did, I'm trying to think, I did knurling not too long ago, but uh, I don't remember how I did it. <laughs> I don't even remember what model it was on. Uh, I know that it didn't go quite as, as when we were making the lathe, uh, the lathe chuck thing. That's right, yeah. It didn't go bad, but you're right, that wasn't, it wasn't, it just, yeah, I mean, like, it was way more aggressive, sort of like these neurals you've just been making. Like, it seemed way more neurally than uh, desired. All right, I'm going to divide these into seven segments. All right, and then I'm going to go... That's always a great face whenever you're doing that, like the... Ditch. Wiping your face, trying to figure out what you're about to do. <laughs> I'm looking at your How about that? Well, every once in a while, I'm like, wow, it's kind of cool when I'm just sitting alone and trying to figure out stuff instead of, you know, publicly <laughs> <laughs> calling us out. Watching you. He, he, I right. think he picked his nose four times during so this funny. session. <laughs> oh. All right. So the issue, the issue that comes up with this is that this is not just straight up, right? This is... is it's bigger at the top. This channel is bigger at the top than it is at the bottom. Um, so I'm just trying to remember how I, just just trying to remember how I did this. Uh, Can't have been that hard. Well, I did it, so it wasn't too complicated. And I was just watching, so it was super easy. My, I just totally brain farted. I'm like, what am I doing? Where, well, hey, you, I'm inside. You want it to be the, you want it to be the full depth of that, of that channel? <laughs> no, no. I want to come up halfway. So, okay. All right. So here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to try up. this. So if I bring this up, it's not going to. It's going to go perpendicular to the face. It's not going to follow. That piece. Now you know what I did this last time. I did the actual full diamond instead of half of it. This is a little bit different. Okay, so if I bring this straight up like that, I don't know what I'm doing. Shh. 
Don't tell anybody. All right, so if I was to re to this, this is so not the way to do it, I don't think. All right, so if I was to do that, Now see, this doesn't help me at all. Why am I doing this? I don't even know what I'm doing. All right. Oh, I remember what I was gonna do. Okay. <laughs> all right. And it, was, it was a little, uh, little bit of drama. Yeah. Very exciting. So I was gonna offset this. One inch. All right, I'll come over here, option here. 3x. I don't know. This is uh, this has already gotten way more complex than I wanted it to be. So I will admit that. Andy said you should draw diamonds instead of triangles. That that could have worked. Hey, fortunately, I have uh, you know multiple uh, opportunities to do this. So I'm just trying to. That's I'm true. trying to. Uh, sort of reminds me of. Did you see um, what's his name? Alm, the guy that did the, or even Tyson's SketchUp model of the guy that that took all the chunks of plywood, cut them in this in the small pieces that look kind of like what you've got right there, and then rearrange them in different patterns. Mm -hmm. That's what basically looks like you're about to create some sort of new. I should be. Neural design. Yeah, I should be doing this in a group too, because I'm about to, I'm about to break some things. <laughs> Yeah, you are. You probably also should save. Probably a good idea. Mm. I'll turn next way. Hmm. That knurling doesn't look like what I'm shooting for. Mm, not quite what I want. All right, save. <laughs> I was actually just thinking how really the main thing I should be doing is working with this in a container of its own. So I should actually have all of this sans whatever piece that is. This should all go into a group real quick. Okay, so what happened here? Somebody got softened. There we go. So if I grab, I'm gonna see if this, I just wanna see if this is gonna work at this point. I'm just trying to picture. So I go from here down to there. Why does that go off axis? Oh, because it needs to shrink too. This is kind of this. It's starting to look like some aggressive off-roading tires. <laughs> I like it. Next week we model a Jeep. I like it. All right. So if I just come, this is not efficient, by the way. This is this is <laughs> hard way, Aaron. Th yeah. This is this is me not giving up on my vision of how to do it, uh, even though I know there is a better way to get this done. I'm just so curious if I can make this happen. And we will find out well, in at, just at a few more least, clicks. We can, we can be amused at your expense. Hey, so that's, thank you for that's what I'm here for. For that. Okay, so now I should. Ah. And didn't work so well. You gotta, you gotta stress stitch across the bottoms too. Oh, yeah. stitching! Hey. So then, yeah, all I should have to do then is. Well, no, I'll have to do diagonals too still. Oh, this is so much. This is so not right. <laughs> yet, yet I can't stop myself from doing it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If, like the feelings I'm feeling right now are confusing to me. Like there's <laughs> a little bit of fascination. There's a little bit of horror. 
It's like watching a uh, car crash in slow motion. Thanks a lot. I, know, I, I, can't, I can't quite determine what I feel. It's not com completely comfortable, though. Yeah, I buy that. Okay. Yeah, so this didn't work. <laughs> well, it's something. I mean, it. I, I can still make it work. It's. I mean, it, but this is. It's just not a practical way to do all this. Um, raising up that diamond would have been the better way to do it. I was just. So the reason I didn't just do it that way to begin with was because when I did that before, I had to come back afterwards, and trim a bunch of stuff off to make the two pieces connect at the right spots. Um, and I was really trying to think, how could I cut it that sure off? Doesn't look like you, it doesn't look like you found an easier way to do whatever no. you were doing. This is definitely not an improvement. You found, an, you found another way to do what you were doing. Well, that's that's not untrue. That would That would be a true statement. This is a thing. Well, you know, if you hadn't done this, you'd never know if you could or should that's ever right. try it again. You know, I that's like right now, you know whether you should try this again. Yeah, that's a big new. All right. Fix that gray piece on the end. Come on. You can't, you can't, you cannot leave that one reversed face down there. It's going to kill me. You're right. Let's see. All right. Here's, here's problem number another. This created a whole bunch of internal surfaces. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. So if I look inside here, I think I got... Oh, it's so bad. It is. This is just the worst <laughs> thing anyone could do. Don't ever do this. Oh, so bad. I, so, I so... want to say that I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you, but oh. you're not laughing as much as me. I don't really I'm, feel like laughing I might laughing be laughing today. at you. I mean, right, I like that pattern. It just seems so tricky to get there. It was just so much work. I mean, this, I, I yeah. think, almost. Well, and then it's me curious to see what happens as soon as you go ahead and just wrap it around there. Is it going to stitch the way I want it to? I don't know. That's what, that's, that's the, the main reason I haven't given up is because. Why? Like Why? Train wreck. Ugh. I you guess know, what I could point, have just... This right here, this is Tom Tom's fault because his tool did not fix it. All right. We'll simplify things. Oh, yeah, you could delete the... Oh, wait. They've said you could delete the bottom face. You don't need it. Which that's is, true. That's a good point. And maybe that would help. Or maybe it won't help. I don't know. But you're erasing so much work that you've already done. That I know. That, well, really, it hurts. It hurts in my all heart. reality... Oh, there it is. A little booger. That, this is what I need. Despite all that other stuff I just did, this is really the only piece <laughs> I need. It was just this big sort of thought exercise to create this one. It was. Well, have you guys... So, as, as SketchUp users... Do you ever start like thinking about how geometry would go together and like like I'll lay there in bed sometimes trying to visualize how things are going I'm like man I just got to get up and use SketchUp to figure out how this would work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is my brain is not 3Ding enough. I right. Need... Exactly. I'm like how how are these face, how would these surfaces come together? Um, yeah. So yeah, basically, this is what I was shooting for that whole time. Uh, this is, which I did not get to quick or easily. But this. But, but here we are. Yeah. Hey, we 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 flew through the rest of that airbrush. So uh, this may be me just it's not, stalling. It's not even two two o'clock yet. So. Right. Yeah. So at that point, I could take this geometry i'm going to explode this hmm. into one and make it into one group and actually i can get rid of some more geometry because i don't need this i don't need this i don't need this i don't need this 
You need lines. Box I need these lines. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Get rid of a lot what? of stuff. Oh, so light. Hmm. So this is pretty much what Sky Kai's nine steps look like, right? <laughs> well, there are uh, Christopher's, but Christopher, yeah, I'm sorry. This is pretty much it. Nailed it. Nice. All right, so I could take that piece then. I could rotate that about my end point here. Go from. Oh, no, no. I need to go. I need to do this just once. And then take this one. Where's my middle? Right here. Come on, give me 90 degrees, or 180. The problem with, the reason this isn't easy is because each piece lays over, right? So actually, what I need to do first, I need to take this right here, and I'm gonna draw this surface back in And then mirror that along, oops, mirror that along this surface. There we go. Now these two together need to go from uh, this corner option to this corner. And rather than doing 47 times, I'm going to do 23x. And that is like that. Now I can grab all these. Actually, I'm going to hide those. No. Select only groups. Hide the groups. Get rid of hidden. See? I went, I went hard at all. It depends on where you're sitting. I'm exhausted. <laughs> All right, let me get rid of this piece right here. Smooth that out. Edit, unhide all. Grab them. Explode them. Oh, explode them again because I had them in multiple groups. And then I can come in here, soften them. So. That gives me somewhat aggressive diamond knurling. It's not very high either. It did come up and get flat real quick. Um, but I was trying to make that easier than what I did before. I don't think Didn't I succeeded work. because <laughs> that was four or five. So let's come into this piece right here. Let's try, let's try something different. All right, uh, I'm going to take two of these and make those into a group. And I'm going to come in here. OK, so an easier way to do that, that's the goal. All right, so I'm going to still I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm going to divide, start by dividing this line because I want to break it into pieces. I need to divide this line too. How many did I do? I already forgot. Uh, you broke them into seven segments last time. Seven. So yeah, I, I did seven again, apparently. Apparently, I like that. I just, apparently, seven sounds like a good number of segments. I read, once, or read, I read somewhere once that people choose numbers that end in sevens and threes more than anything else when they're trying to pick a random number. Mm hmm. That's interesting. So maybe you think maybe you think you're being random. Could be. I, I mean, seven feels random to me. Feels like the most random number. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
see, I don't know. I've, I've always had a, had a good, my birthday is on the 27th. I was 27 when I got married. I have seven kids. No, just kidding. I don't have seven kids. Seven brides, seven brothers. Yeah. Don't have that either. All right. So this is the neural I want to do. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put my axis right here because I think what I can do here just to keep this simple is I could say move this point along the blue axis. No, wait, stop selecting stuff. Move this point up the blue axis half an inch. half an inch and then take this one down the blue axis. No, this would come up the axis too. Half an inch. Take this one up half an inch. Yeah. Oh, I have to do these two too. Half an inch and half an inch. All right, now I can take get rid of that. I'll take this piece, rotate it along blue, 180 degrees. All right, need one more, one more chunk. Take this piece right here, rotate this. Yeah, this is how you did it last time, I think. This I think we're closer. This all we're feels, this feels familiar. <clears throat> All right, see the problem, this is, so this is the reason I was trying to get away from doing this. Um, I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna move it into the surface like that. I'm gonna make it a component. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm gonna take that I really just totally decimated all of my, oh, it's because they're follow me's and they don't have centers. That's why. Uh, oh yeah. The circles at the end. Right. So if I do that, 23 X, that gets all the way around. That's, that's not bad. That's okay. The problem with this, and this is what I was trying to avoid was having to do this cleanup right here. So because oh. I took, those points and I moved them perpendicular to the blue axis, they went like this. Because it's on a cylinder, that's what I was saying before, it's not the profile of the neural isn't this, it's actually like this. So, so each it feels of these- like you could, you could fix that by just doing it, making two of those sec sections, doing the fix and then wrapping that or three sections or whatever. Right, so what I have to do now is I have to come in here and trace this center line. Or you could use intersect with model. Oh, wait, that's not gonna work. Again, I should probably just do this once and then flip the whole thing around again. Cause then I can go trim maybe this Maybe you off. could move the neurals up by half an inch maybe? Well, it won't matter because it's the taper that's the issue. Yeah. Um, so I have to come up here, cut this. Oh, man, I'm really struggling not having my proper. Is it proper? Uh, driver for my mouse. It's I'm. Oh, are you having problems with yours? Yeah, I still don't I have the the right, the right driver. I'm gonna do this from underneath. Is that easier? Oh, oh, your, my your 3D mouse. Is. I'm sorry, my 3D mouse, yeah. yeah. So 
So really, I just got to get one of these sections cleaned up. And then I can copy it over like I did before. What happens here? Oh, see, this is this is what's going to be the problem is my neural is going to be off because of the way I did that because I didn't account for the narrowing. Uh, my narrowing is going to be just off like this, which is okay. I mean, it's still okay. It'll it'll still work. So these surfaces then make up one section. I'm going to go ahead and grab everything that falls after that and delete it. Clean that up there, clean that up there. And then I can grab three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Go from here, option to here. And compose that. There they're, we go. They're just miracles. They really are nice. And I can get rid of this chunk on the end. All right, there we go. So that gives me the full diamond knurling. Um, what I do want to do at this point is grab all of these and explode them. It should, yeah, healed up nicely. And uh, hmm. is there a quick way to get rid of this? Solid Inspector might do it. Hold on. Nope, I'm not going to get rid of it for me. Oh, come on, man. Well, actually, hold on. If I get rid of this, that might help. Help it see where the insides and outsides are. What if I run it now? Nope, still doesn't want to do it for me. Okay. Whoops, whoops. Mm -hmm. Careful. Watch it. Watch it, buddy. Let's hide the rest of the model. That's going to make it a little bit easier. Then I just have to kind of cook up. around here. Clean up work, work on this? Clean up cubed? Um, I'm trying to think of where, what tool would, would do that, would go through and say, oh, here's an edge. This, this seems like something Solid Inspector would be able to do, but obviously Solid Inspector can't tell what part of this is what I want to keep and what I don't want. But oh, that's not too bad. There's only a few seconds of, of deleting. Drag and delete. It's definitely going better than the previous neural. Hey, we got options, you know? You do it uh, quick and easy or you can drag it out and make it painful. Yeah, choice is yours. <laughs> All right, and we are, eh, eh. You know, I'm thinking as I do this, So we've got lots of different options here. I'll say that this is a this is a nearly optional nearly option airbrush. Um, I was just thinking, like, could I create a way to do knurling that? Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I was thinking of. Uh, Vertex tools. So vertex tools lets you move points rather than faces or surfaces. You can move points with regular SketchUp, but you're limited to only moving one at a time. So that's that was that was how I did this. But I had to grab each point individually and pull it out. So I'm wondering, uh, and I don't prefer Andy painfulness. <laughs> And the, just what I tell my, it. I tell myself that I'm I'm causing myself pain, so you guys don't have to. <laughs> That's the instructor way instructor way of doing it. Is you go, oh that was rough. You guys don't do that. Um, but I was wondering, the only thing I can't think of is how to do the selection process because I was thinking you could do something like this. I could come in here, create a circle. 
push pull that up a certain amount. Um, so I'll grab all of that and copy it again. Oops, I double clicked. All right, so if I had that, if I took all of that, did this, I don't know, now, now I'm just, If I had that, now I'm just wondering if I was to take vertex tools and this would be the hard part because I'd have to come through here and grab, uh, oh, but again, I don't have to do this this many times. Would you learn? Come on, man. <laughs> What's the hardest way to do this? I know I'll get 4,000 cubes. I only have to do all. this half the time. Okay. But if I grab these okay this is this suddenly seems like this might not be too bad so i have to click 12 times because there's 24 points so i'm grabbing half the points or you could just make a component of a neural pattern and just keep that in a library and pull that out every time you need to neural well, yeah, doing it once and reusing a component is obviously a smarter way to do it. So basically, if I grab every other, I'm, at this point, we're, we're, we're at uh, thought experiment once again here, folks. Um, and I'm just, I'm just wondering how this is going to turn out. I mean, in my head, this is perfect. And I'm almost there. This is a couple extra steps, but I'm, I'm really thinking about this compared to what I just did. I don't know that this is necessarily more work and this is going to do it in one move. Almost, almost all of them. All right. With that, if I was to come in here right now and grab this. I remember which modifier key to push. Nope, that was not it. I might have to do it both directions. So I pull it this way, 0.9, pull it this way, 0.9. And then if I was to grab all of that, option here, 5x, so I have a neural there, it's just not, how do I explode that, let me just turn my head in line, oh, but it's going to make it uniform like that. Well, and, and it begs the question that uh, Lawrence was wondering was, how do you go about making this, machining this later? I mean, as I said, it's not my problem. Yeah, I don't not machine your problem. things. <laughs> <laughs> so that would work if I had, well, again, no, this is, this is all so much simpler, obviously, than I need to make it. Is that what I meant to say? So really, when it all comes down to it, knurling, drawing knurling, whoa, 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 hold up. I need to get the center of this circle. 
drawing knurling is really about getting two triangles. relative to the center of the circle. So if I took just these and I was to rotate from here to here, 23x, yes, that didn't close for some reason. Oh, it's just slightly off. Ah, well, maybe not. Well, but anyhow, my point is, if I grab that, I could feasibly make that into a knurled pattern. That's indented diamonds instead of, so it's actually backwards. Yeah, but I grabbed the wrong, I grabbed the wrong two. Yeah, anyhow, I was wondering if you could do that. It, it wouldn't be too bad to make that work uh, with vertex tools. We don't have to because we're already done, but, Boom. you know. Yeah, it seems a little tricky to like, building it in place the way you just did for those for two neurals you did, one of which mm -hmm. was hard and one was not, um, seems a lot easier than trying to create it elsewhere and stick it on there. Yeah, like well, I know or what we've done it before. Uh, we've done it with cutters, too. So where you make the diamond-shaped cup and go chop it out of the solid, which is really more how it would be machined, right? Because you'd be cut it, cut it, yeah. cut it, or press it or whatever. Um, so cutting it out of the, the solid, that would be an option too. But, uh, yeah, anyhow, that's our airbrush. <laughs> that's the important part, I guess. Sure. <laughs> uh, it's now the tank. Oh, wait, we're still going home. There we go. Boom. So that was pretty cool. That was actually, that was a really fun model. <clears throat> it was, uh. Yeah, my initial thoughts, based on my memory of how simple such a thing was, I was expecting it to be a much simpler process. All the neurals and, and changing diameters of stuff definitely yeah, that was a, messes with you. A thing, for sure. Don't forget, don't forget to scale it. You said at the beginning to remind you to scale yeah. it. Let's grab all of this, make that into a single group, and I'm going to make a copy of it. And in this, I'm going to come in here and so come into the group. That's a very important part. And I'm going to draw a line here, take it back to there. And I think somebody said it's about seven inches, so I'm going to use that number. I'm going to say from here to here is seven inches seven that seems random no somebody said that was the size of an awata would you say just some random person said that no somebody on the forum said it or comment i saw it in relation to what we're doing <laughs> uh, i'm just kidding you should All save right. the file though christopher said save and then i'll come in here get rid of that boom save so here, maybe I'll do this too. I'll uh, I'll take this one and add this to a big air brush layer that I can turn off. So when I upload it, it'll look so nice and clean and just this little guy. But the full size version's in there too. Oh, Andy, Andy's the one that said the size. Okay. Andy's not random. See, somebody somebody who I had some faith in. Okay, all right. 
<laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say what the other party said because I don't know. It's extra work. We were talking about engraving the. Oh yeah. The name on there. Uh, I should probably do that. Should have done that on the big one. All right, we should probably just put SketchUp in there, right? Yeah. Because I mean, yours is not an exact replica of the Iwata. It's just a representation. Skip. <laughs> like that. Up. Um, you know what I tend to do? I tend to, I very rarely come in here and do this, but uh, I think if you actually know what you're doing, it's probably easier to set all this stuff right first and then, then place it. But I, it seems like four out of five times that I do 3D text, I draw it at just some random size because I know I'm going to come in here and scale it afterwards. You guys, you guys ever get that? No, you do it right to begin with. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, everybody here says they do it right from the beginning. That's great. Great for you. Good for you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wonder if that, let's see if that made it to the inside tube. It did not. Perfect. So I have it in there. Let's see if we can see it. Just deep enough that it breaks the inside tube but doesn't touch the outside tube. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Because then what I can do is I can say, let's see, how to best do this. Go grab all this, control C. I'll just grab this surface, say intersect face with context. All right, so now clean up, right? So here's the issue now. If I just grab this and delete it, looks great, but now I got all this extra junk in here and coming in here in this cramped position trying to get rid of it can kind of suck. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to grab this surface right here and control C. And now I'm going to undo a couple times till that goes away. Now I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to edit, paste in place. Oh, but that has holes in it. So that doesn't work. Well, it was a good try. That was a good try. Thank you. Um, so the reason what I what I'm trying not to do is say intersect with model because that's going to cause issues because I'm I'm actually this piece right here is touching this piece right here is touch all these pieces are actually colliding with my body so I don't necessarily want to come in and say intersect with model because I think I'm going to get a bunch of pieces like just barely cut off there or or redundant faces so what I can do is I can here's what I'll do I will just take this just the body, make that into a group, double click, make group. Now I can come in here, oops, nope, oh, come on, come on, man, there we go. Grab this, control C, come into just my isolated face right here, edit, paste in place, and now I can just, I could actually just, yeah, grab this, say intersect face with context. What this does is it does it intersects exactly the same, but it's going to, for one thing, it's going to make it a lot easier to clean up because I don't have all those other faces to worry about. Um, you know, this might be a time that I go in here and set my camera to parallel. Oh, so weird. I don't know how people work in parallel. Come in here. <laughs> Oops. Delete, delete, delete. I see people all the time in the forum, usually brand new users who are like, I really want to, I really want to, they for whatever reason think they want to work in that. And I don't, I just don't get that. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to presume that usually they want to work in just, they want to work from top down. They want to draft like drawing on paper kind of thing. 
Yeah, maybe. Ooh, yeah, SketchUp brush. We don't have an airbrush tool Ooh. in uh, SketchUp. Till now. <clears throat> awesome. You know what's occurring to me right now is this little guy right down here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, looks so nice. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that. Hide my big brush. Just get my properly sized brush. Yeah, that's the stuff. So something else we could do is I could come down here. Uh, I get this question a lot. These colored pencils, when I come here to, to use this to, to color stuff in, I use it in, in other videos a lot too. This is not an extension. This is just the default. Uh, OS level color picker. Yeah. We, we just use the operating systems tools to color things. So this is just what Mac uses to show colors. All right, so colored everything that, that, that light gray. I'll come in here. Let's see, do we go lighter or darker with the letters? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like sandblasted into the side of the metal. This is all real nice shiny chrome and then this is kind of rough. That looks okay. Etched. Yeah, that's that's the word. Yes, yes. So now I'll come in here. I just want to curious how this is gonna look. Get this S all cleaned up. Let's see if it's worth pursuing the rest of it. Oh yeah, see that's what I want. Ketchup. Um, how? What's the easiest way to do this to get rid of those lines? If I just go like this, select. I like how you just automatically orbit around to uh, unselect the stuff that you know you selected, <laughs> over selected. Been there before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that is definitely a tool that uh, is worth, you know, spending some time on practicing is really precision selection. So what I got now is I have just those line edges around there. So now I can actually come over here and just soften and smooth those lines, which gives me that kind of etched into the silver look that turned out all right <coughs> all right all right all right all right nope i don't go there i don't do that anymore oh you don't okay no. Sorry. <laughs> awesome well i'm gonna call it at that point that, that's a good looking that's a good looking airbrush right there stick uh, a fork in it that's right she's done awesome well i think uh yeah that kind of wraps it we actually have an idea that we're working on for next week which is gonna be Pretty cool, assuming it all works out. Um, especially if you're into any sort of uh, carpentry, woodworking, building of any kind. Uh, could be could be a lot of fun. So keep an eye on social media. If you don't subscribe to us, get following us on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn. What did I miss? Join us on the um. forum. Um, because we'll be announcing what we'll MySpace. be working on in the the uh, near future. Probably like what? Uh, what do we usually announce that stuff? Sometime in Just the near future. That. I don't know. Colin's, yeah. Colin's out there shouting out the answer. 43? Tisk, tisk, tut, tut. Oh. No, 42. 42. <laughs> Dang it, I got that wrong also. <laughs> <laughs> But that's uh, okay. You know, whatever. Yes, yeah, so we so have. There's a there's a comment there's a comment in here from Facebook from Doug Al Olivier, say a nice one. Oh, Doug, thank you, know Doug. Doug. I'll deliver. <laughs> Thanks I mean, for. I, didn't, I don't remember there being that last I in his name, so who knew? Ah, that's that's new. Uh, thanks, Doug. It's good to see you. I hope things are well, uh, in Kiwiland. At least he's not being sick down there. Yeah, that's true. 
I, I have done a barber chair. That's actually kind of funny. Yes, I'm actually, I'm going in tomorrow to get uh, get a whole lot of this gone. So hopefully next time you see me, I'll have... Uh, no more mullets. <laughs> gone is the mullet. A much, much less hair than what I got now. So, but I, I have, we have modeled a barber chair before. It's funny, we did model an old school, old fashioned barber chair. That's up on our live streams somewhere. But, uh... Yeah. So um, this is the, it's also worth restating because I mm -hmm. saw someone ask earlier: Is this model will be pushed up to the yes to the forum? Yep. If you if you wanted to save it, don't already. And Jody could actually probably drop that link in again. Uh, nope. On the forum, we'll actually have a link to this. This will go up onto 3D Warehouse, and I will share it probably in the next uh, 20, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. This will be up there, so you can grab it and download it and do. I don't know, whatever you want to do. Just have it. Just own a piece of history, really. It's probably probably what you're shooting for. Maybe not. <laughs> cool. Either so whatever you want with it. There it is. Um, so yeah. So you guys, thank you for joining us. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed that. Hope that was some, some relaxing time for you to just hang out and watch some sketch up and, and uh, what I always shoot for is hopefully you learned something. Maybe you learned what not to do. I'll take that too. It's a lesson. It's a lesson. So that's still learning. That's learning right. what not to do is that's most <laughs> of my learning is learning what not to do. It's not that I learned the right things to do. It's <sighs> I use the wrong, learn the wrong things. What to stay away from. Still doing. works. Still works. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, we will be back here uh, unless something bad happens between now and then. We will plan on being back here next Friday with another live model. So uh, yeah, come hang out with us then. Otherwise, uh, you guys have a great week, and we will see you later. See you guys.